Hi all, welcome back, hope you're all well. So today's video is just a basic video showing the install of a, a new CPU cooler that I put into my PC. Um, this one isn't as detailed as some of the others you might see on YouTube, basically because I don't have the proper equipment and sometimes it helps to have a second pair of hands, and in this case I didn't. But anyway, in today's video you'll see me installing the Corsair H100i Elite Capellix, which is a 240mm radiator with two 120mm fans and also comes with the Commander Core fan unit. I've also got six Corsair LL120 fans these will replace the two fans that come with the cooler and the four case fans which are in my Aero 1 Eclipse RGB case by Aerocool. I've also bought a Casa wipes for cleaning off the thermal paste and I bought Cryonaut thermal paste as well to use instead of the, the, the standard stuff that comes in the bottom, bottom of the cooler. So yeah, let's go on with it. So here are the new fans and the new cooler that will be going into my AeroCool Aero1 Eclipse RGB case to replace the Eclipse 12 fans and also replacing the Wraith, RGB, uh, Wraith Prism RGB cooler which came with my Ryzen 7 3700X. Currently running Cinebench as well just to get the temperatures up in the processor. Um, that basically helps removing the cooler as the thermal paste gets heated up makes things a, a lot easier for removal. Okay, so the first thing to do is unplug the cable from the motherboard for the fan power. And then I'll need to unlatch the clamp that holds us down onto the processor. Um, apologies about this bit, I'm trying to do this one handed so it's probably going to be a bit tricky. Just need to lift this little lever here. That takes the pressure off the clamp. This is a fun part, try to do this one handed. It's also uh, good just to remember as well, never, uh, as once you get these clamps off, never to pull the processor or the cooler straight up as they it can actually rip the processor out so if you give it a little wiggle sideways it should leave a processor, with, processor where it is and uh, as I said before I ran Cinebench before doing this got the temperatures up in the processor made the grease a lot uh, softer so much easier to remove as you can see I'm struggling with this big time Let's switch hands see if it makes it any easier there we go. And that was the the paste that basically came with a processor. But bit left on the cooler and a bit on the processor. So as you can see I've cleaned the old um, thermal paste off the processor using the Acasa Tim or TIM wipes and I've also removed it from the bottom of the old cooler as well just in case I ever need to reuse it. So yeah, pretty clean. And next job is to remove the existing case fans uh, which are the Eclipse 12 fans from Aerocool, 6 series in total. And round the back of the case we have the old fan hub unit and a load of the cables which we'll remove and get that tidied up, ready for the, the Commander core to go in there. So as you can see that's all the fans now removed from the case. Uh, 6 fans now gone. Plenty of space up the top here for fitting the cooler which is quite nice about this case. It's tall but quite narrow in depth, um, which is good for sitting up on my, my table, doesn't take up too much space. And round the back, the old fan hub is now gone as well, and all the fan cables too. And now that's us got all the, the front case fans installed, which are intakes, and the one case fan at the back, which is an exhaust. Just use the existing holes that the, the old fans uh, cables ran through, and fed these ones through them as well. So here we have the cooler all unboxed and ready to install. This comes with the Commander Core unit as I mentioned earlier, which you can see here. And has various brackets depending on the type of processor you're using. A little bag with uh, various screws and stuff as well for install. 
change your faceplate depending on what one you like, a white one or a, a black one, and the pre-applied paste at the bottom which I'll remove, put a cry knot on, and there we have the the plug that goes into the bottom of the commander core unit and the one into the motherboard. As you can see I've now got the radiator installed to the top of the case and used the last of those two LL120 fans. Processor is ready for the pump to be installed on and uh, here is the thermal grizzly cryonaut paste that I'll be using. That's the pump now installed which looks brilliant in there, plenty of space as well which made things really easy for installing it and I've fed the cable through to the back of the case. This is the other side of the case, we can see all the cables coming through from the pump and all the six fans. Bit of a mess in there, so I'll spend a bit of time tidying all that up and hooking up to the commander core unit. So hooking up this commander core unit was actually straightforward. On the right hand side we have the pump connection. Um, the pump has two cables that comes with it. One of these goes straight into this commander core unit on the right hand side. And as I said earlier on, the other one leads to a CPU fan or a pump fan header on your motherboard. On the left hand side of the Commander Core unit, we have a SATA power cable. Just hook that up to any spare SATA power connection you have from your PSU. And then we have a USB connection as well, which hooks up to a USB connection on your motherboard. This allows you to control the fan speed and the RGB through the IQ software. The LL120 fans each come with two cables each, one of the cables for controlling the, the power to the fan basically and the other one is for the RGB for the fans. So the RGB connections go into the top of this unit and the fan power connections go to the bottom. You can't get these round the, the wrong way, the, the plugs are basically different shapes so you can't make any mistakes here. But what you do need to do is make sure that the fans are placed in this in sequence. Uh, for mine I have number one set as the bottom fan in my case and then the next fan up and so on and so on going across the fans and the attached to the radiator and then the last one in the back of my case makes everything sequential so when you actually come to do the RGB it all looks apart although if you do make any mistakes the IQ software does allow you to manually move the fans around uh, in the software itself and uh, that allows you to get everything in the right sequence if needed so yeah it's all looking apart so here's a couple of demonstrations with everything all hooked up. Um, a couple of the colour schemes that I like to use. First off is the, the pink or the, the purple and blue. And as you can see it's all the, the fans up and running. Really, really, really looks nice. Change the colours in the pump unit as well. Sorry about the camera, it's not quite focusing on that. But it's so, so quiet, whisper quiet compared to the previous setup with the, the Wraith Prism cooler and the, the old case fans as well. All we can really hear is a slow hum off the, the pump and there's Safi getting a suntan. And here's my all white setup which I really really like, it's very very clean looking, super super clean. I've got the memory modules, the fans and the pump and motherboard lights all set to white which I really really like. Lights in the back of the monitor, keyboard and mouse are all set to white as well and the graphics card. So yeah, there you go guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about it. These are the kind of videos that you enjoy watching. And uh, goodbye for Safi as well. So, thanks again for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.